Hey there again, Kawaii50 here, and we've got another spicy, let's talk about some video games video for ya. Though not, not too, too spicy. More like, uh, you, you know that green hot sauce you can get from Tabasco? That stuff, that kind of spicy. By the way, like and subscribe. Okay, that's out of the way. Now, I'm sure some of you saw that the Game of the Year nominees came out this year for the Game Awards. It's basically all anybody's talking about. It is the main reason I am doing this video. And we got some nominees here. In case you're out of the know, the nominees for Game of the Year this year are Astro Boy, Bellatro, Black Myth Wukong, Metaphor Refantasio, Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, and Elden Ring, Shadow of the Erd Tree. And this is where there is a lot of contention. Let me say this right at the jump before anybody tries to come in and, you know, throw hands with me, as it would say. I played Shadow of the Earth Tree. I love Shadow of the Earth Tree. I love Souls-like games. They are excellent. Shadow of the Earth Tree was phenomenal. But it is not Shadow of the Earth Tree's quality that is in question with people being up in arms about it being announced for Game of the Year. It is the fact that Shadow of the Earth Tree is DLC. And with Shadow of the Earth Tree being DLC, this means you have to play through another entire whole video game to get to Shadow of the Earth Tree. It is not a standalone DLC you can immediately pick up and play. It is DLC DLC where you have to play through the main game and own the main game already in order to get to it. Now you might be asking yourself, well, how does a DLC end up making it into Game of the Year? And well, we had an announcement from the Game Awards asking, you know, are DLCs, expansion packs, and remakes, remasters eligible? This is straight from the horse's mouth. The Game Awards aims to recognize the best creative and technical work every year, irrespective of the format of that content's release. Expansion packs, new game seasons, DLCs, remakes, and masters are eligible in all categories if the jury deems a new creative and technical work to be worthy of nomination. Factors such as the newness of content and its price slash value are also taken into consideration. The thing that would be really make me personally okay with this despite being again a lover of elden ring i adored elden ring it was my game of the year the year it came out this would be okay if we had you know multiple dlcs considered in this category like if there were more things other than shadow of the earth tree we just had a year full of incredible incredible additional game content in order to you know get out there and definitely recognize however at the end of the day the only dlc that is eligible in a lot of these categories is specifically shadow of the earth tree and that's what's leading to a lot of people start to you know question things like oh okay i would get this if there were a lot of other you know dlcs out this year but it just being shadow of the earth tree as the kids say these days it's a little sus and the reason it's a little sus is it seems to many people, and I've seen this sentiment echoing everywhere online, call it cherry picking, what have you, I also potentially share this sentiment that this might just be a case to try to have Elden Ring win Game of the Year multiple times in a row. But gang, we got to remember that we all sort of have short memories, all things considered. Some people will say this is unprecedented. How could this have happened? Like, what is going on here? But this is actually not the case at all. You see, back in 2016 in the Game Awards, I know 2016 was basically almost a decade ago. So a lot of people aren't going to realize that this was the case, but... There is an instance of an expansion pack slash DLC previously winning an award. That game was The Witcher 3 Wild Hunt Blood and Wine. This was the second and final expansion pack for The Witcher 3, one of my personal favorite games of all time. And this did end up winning Best RPG at the Game Awards 2016. This actually ended up beating out in terms of games Dark Souls 3, Deus Ex Mankind Divided, Xenoblade Chronicles X, and World of Warcraft Legion. Another example of an expansion, a piece of DLC, 
getting nominated for Game of the Year. So even though it hasn't happened in a really long time, this is a point I actually have to side with the Game Awards on, no matter how anyone feels about it. This has always been the case. There is legitimate precedent for a DLC slash expansion pack winning a category at the Game Awards. Now, Blood & Wine winning RPG of the Year did not come without its share of controversy at the Game Awards. Of course, people were upset, especially that it won over Dark Souls 3. And, you know, there were arguments for and against people saying, you know, hey, Dark Souls 3 is a full game. Dark Souls 3 should have been the thing that won RPG of the Year. Why was a DLC in a category dedicated for best role-playing games? Why is there no best DLC category? How did Witcher 3 win art best RPG of 2016? Like, this is all stuff we have talked about before. So this is essentially just a resurrection of a conversation that we have all already had. And just like was the situation, gamers themselves are decidedly mixed on the outcome. And it probably would have been the same had World of Warcraft Legion, one of the other games nominated in the category, had won over both Blood and Wine and Dark Souls 3. There was potential for this conversation happening no matter what. So Justin, where do you stand on this? Where can we put your consistency so we can pull up these receipts in 10 years if you potentially pick one way or another, if you're still doing YouTube? Well, I even back then had hoped that Dark Souls 3 had won Game of the Year because again, Blood and Wine and Legion, while good, were both DLC. And I had personally hoped that there would have been a best DLC category where those things could have been recognized and we could have given more breadth and more potential recognition and nominations to other great RPGs that had also come out. The Game Awards desperately needs a best DLC category. They needed it back then in 2016 and they need it now. When it comes to my personal picks of their nominees for the Game of the Year, I mean, it's, it's kind of a toss up, but as great as Shadow of the Earth Tree is, my pick is either between Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, which was amazing, or Metaphor Refantasio, which was also amazing. I enjoyed both of those games. Then we start to get nebulous, a whole conversation that I admittedly do not have the chops to go into in terms of game design theory, which, well, do we start considering sequels, considering you needed to play the entire previous game to truly understand a sequel, because sequels, even though they tell us they're standalone for marketing reasons, are never really standalone for marketing reasons. What other games could have potentially gone into that slot? Well, I mean, there were a lot of really good games that came out this year that could have been nominated for the Game of the Year slot. I mean, let's just let's just go ahead and go through a quick list of some other amazing games that deserve your time and recognition. And as I list off these games with little bits of footage, I know I'm going to hate myself in the editing room later. But we could have looked at other full games like Warhammer 40k, Space Marine 2, Stellar Blade, Helldivers 2, Tekken 8, Silent Hill 2, Like a Dragon Infinite Wealth. Animal Well, Dragon's Dogma 2, Legend of Heroes Trails Through Daybreak, Dragon Quest 3 HD 2D Remake, Unicorn Overlord, Frostpunk 2, Paper Mario The Thousand Year Door Remake, Dragon Ball Sparking Zero, Five Nights at Freddy's Into the Pit, Visions of Mana, Romancing Saga 2, Revenge of the Seven, or even if you want to go all the way into the indie game scene, we can talk about the game that had the best title that came out this year, Duck Detective The Secret Salami. As I said at the jump of the video, Elden Ring, amazing DLC, great DLC. But I mean, if we've already had this precedent previously and incredible things like, say for example, the one I know a lot of people are gonna bring up, Xenoblade Chronicles 3, Future Redeemed, were unable to specifically be nominated. You can call JRPG bias, what have you. I'm not particularly in that room so i can't say otherwise you could say anime bias since the jrpgs up there aren't necessarily super anime but the metaphor refantasio is anime i am getting off on a tangent people are going to be upset because it's going to lead into this thought that their games were previously snubbed i get it i understand it it hurts when there is a game you love a game you adore your absolute potentially favorite game of the year, one of the pinnacles of things you have enjoyed, 
not getting the recognition that you believe it deserves. I know that. I understand that. I mean, I'm a Dynasty Warriors fan. I continually suffer every single day as a result of that. And hopefully my suffering will end with Dynasty Warriors Origins. But, I mean, the question remains, and I've got to go ahead and posit it to you. Do you believe that a DLC should be in the nominee for Game of the Year? Do you think the Game Awards should have its own specific DLC category? And what would you have personally put in there if not for Shadow of the Erd Tree? As an additional hard mode thing, what other DLC would you have nominated alongside Shadow of the Erd Tree for the best DLC category? This can be DLC, this can be expansion packs like Final Fantasy XIV Dawn Trail, the world is your oyster. So go ahead and let me know those things down in the comment section below. I just really wanted to talk about this because everyone was talking about this. I needed to personally clear this up because I watched the Game Awards back in 2016 and after some time thinking about it, I came to the realization, had that memory spark, that neuron fire, and be like, this has all happened before. So I needed to remind people who may not have been old enough at that time that this has all happened before. But still, let me know your thoughts. Keep it civil. As you head down in the comment section below, be sure to check out the Discord, the Patreon, and the Ko-fi. Huge thanks to everyone across all of those platforms for all of their support, and a big thanks to you here on YouTube for watching the video to the very end. That's it for me, Kawaii 50 I hope you all have a phenomenal day. I'll see you all in the next one. Take care, and bye-bye. <laughs>